peoples, we back with another video review. And today I had the opportunity to take a look at the studio series 106 Transformers Rise of the Beast Optimus Primal today. And I must say, guys, this is going to be a very detailed and long review. So sit tight, get you some popcorn, some Mike and Ikes or something and enjoy the review. For the contents inside of this packaging, we get the backdrop, which is straight cut from the movie scene where Optimus Primal bursts through the, the trees and whatever to confront the humans who are searching for the transwarp key. Then to the left of Optimus Primal, I just got a quick uh, view so you can see the back of the packaging, what he comes with, the little read up, whatever you want to do. And then also standard with all Transformer figures, we get the instruction manual. Now for the main accessories inside this box, it is jam packed with tons of accessories, as you can see. We get Optimus Primal Swords. We get the Trans Warp Key that separates into two pieces if you would like to do that. We get the Chain Links if you want to incorporate that into Optimus Primal Sword for the deleted scenes in the Transformers movie, or you can give it to Battle Trap and give him more of a more movie accurate appearing with that chain ball with the chain links. And then most importantly, we have Optimus Primes Energon Axe that goes with the Studio Series 102 Buzzworthy Bumblebee Optimus Prime. As for the details on this figure, here I am zoomed in on the Studio Series Optimus Primal figure right here. As you can see, he has a ton of details and I think Hasbro has actually hit a home run on the details on this figure. Check out the face sculpt. The face sculpt on this figure is definitely spot on and I think it's terrific. I think they did an outstanding job. Then coming to look at where the uh, upper pecs for the chest, they have the uh, worn weathering of the silver up there. And then not only that, you have it right there on his chest, uh, the weathering continuing right there. Then on the shoulder pads, you have the eight uh, skin texture and also on the forearms. Then you got it also on the legs, and then you have that battle damage wear on the uh, shins of the uh, Optimus Primal right here in robot mode. And, and this figure, like I said, it feels good to have this in my hand. It definitely looks very, uh, just check out where the shoulder, where the armpits would be, guys. Look right here. There's even printed details on that black plastic to represent the ape skin once again. And then just looking at it as a whole, it definitely follows that paint color scheme as what we saw in the movie theaters with Optimus Primal being a dark figure. Now, when I say dark, I'm not saying dark as in bad. I'm saying dark as in he was a ton of black, gray, and a little bit of like a metallic. So yes, it definitely looks good. And I like the way Hasbro has did an excellent job on the details on this figure. As for the articulation, guys, I've already zoomed out. So let's go ahead and check it out. So basically right here, Optimus Prime can rotate his head left and right. Uh, it can look up this high. It can look down that low. So you don't get a lot right there. Uh, there is no mouth plate switching, unfortunately, like we got with the Takara uh, Ultimate version. But the arms rotate a full 360, as you can see. You can lift the shoulder pads up to get a more uh, dynamic uh, pose, if you would like, for the arms, like he's maybe swinging from a tree. Not only that, you also get a butterfly hinge right here. So you can have his arms coming back if you prefer. I don't know what pose you would use that for. Has a upper bicep swivel, as you can see. It also bends 90 degrees. And the, the wrist does swivel, so you could definitely move those hands around, guys, if you would like. They also open separately, as you can see, with the ring finger and the pinky finger, and then the index and the pointy finger. So you could definitely have it whatever type of pose you want on the fist. You can do that if you like. The hips can kick up this high. The knee can bend 90 degrees, as you can see. The foot is on a rocker. It can rock forward and also backwards and side to side, as you already know. There is a small thigh swivel, but you can't go all the way around. But this is as far as you go. And it also has a waist swivel, guys. So, yes, we actually get a lot 
or the standard, you know, articulation of what we normally get with these figures. So yes, this Optimus Primal definitely holds up to leader class standards with the articulation. So let's continue with the review and let's check out the accessories. So all right, for the accessories guys, as I just stated, the first accessories we're gonna take a look at is Optimus Primal Swords. Now his swords can definitely combine together and give him that more sword staff if you would like to do that. Like he did in the movie, that's totally up to you. With that being said, you can also store them on his back right here. Disregard the other figures because we're not ready to talk about them. But here the next accessory is the chain. You get two chains right here and the chains can basically just connect to the sword if you would like to give him more of that longer chain looking sword appearance. That's up to you. But the reason why I have the chain and uh, battle trap out here is because this I feel like was made for this feature right here. Here you have battle trap where the chains can attach to the actual uh, cannonball or whatever you want to call it, the mace, the club. Uh, now to get it to pose the way you want to attach it to his arm. Now that's a different story, but I do think it was meant to uh, come in here like this, guys. And maybe you can have it like he's throwing it at somebody or whatever, if you would like, or just have him hold it. And then here is another important accessory that we get right here. Here we have Optimus Prime's Energon Axe. So basically it just fits in his hand and it makes him now more complete to have that Energon Axe as we saw in the movie. And the last accessory that comes with Optimus Primal is the Trans Warp Key. So here we have it right here. I've already separated it. So basically, if you want to combine it to make it one full key or reenact scenes from the movie where they're searching for both copies of this key to make the transwarp key, you could definitely do that. And it simply just comes together just like that. And if you don't want it together, you just twist and pull and it comes right back apart. So yes, these are all the accessories and I think they were important to come with Optimus Primal to equip our other studio uh, series figures and make them more screen movie accurate. And here we are to kickstart the comparison portion of my review. This is what I like to do. I think it looks great seeing Optimus Primal here compared to Battle Trap and then also compared to Optimus Prime. I think it scales well because I do remember Optimus Prime being a little bit bigger than Optimus Primal, but I know Optimus Primal's ink form was huge. But just looking at these three right here, I think they scale well, and I like what Hasbro is doing with the studio series so far. Next comparison, here we have the whole Autobots and Maximal crew assembled, except for Wheeljack. Unfortunately, the studio series of Wheeljack has not been released, so we don't know what it's supposed to look like or when we're getting it, but I know it's sometime next year. But this is what we get with all the release figures so far, and I must say they look good as a whole as the studio series line and i like the way that optimus primal fits with the maximals and not only with the maximals but with the autobots in scale and here we are for my third comparison here i have the studio series optimus primal who is a leader class compared to other leader class figures of figures from the past that we may already own or may want it now, the first leader I'm comparing them with is the Studio Series um, Legacy Evolution G2 Grimlock, which is a Walmart exclusive, as you already know. You may already have it, and you see the difference between the two figures. I feel like Optimus Primal is technically a Voyager who was upscaled to a leader class due to all the accessories that he has came with. Not saying that he doesn't have the engineering and the plastic count inside of his body. He does have that, but I think with the accessories they've given us, that's what upscaled him to a leader class point so that we can get all those accessories for the previous figures that they weren't able to put it in due to budget constraints with the previous figures from the studio series. Now, when compared to the power of the Primes, Optimus Primal, uh, Transmetal 2 version right here, you can see that he's even bigger than Grimlock. And Grimlock is what we get for the tallest for Studio Series so far. 
as you see right here, toys have now started to shrink. And that is a shame. And I feel like the Optimus Primal, Optimal, Optimus is a terrific figure and the height of the toy is just perfect. The only thing missing with that is that we're missing the gimmicks. I do wish Hasbro would bring back the gimmicks because the gimmicks what makes toys better. And for my final comparison, here we have all of the Optimus Primal figures from the Transformers Rise of the Beast that I own. And as you can see right here, that I do believe the Studio Series out of all of the Optimus Primes right here is the best in my opinion. Now, I do like the gimmicks on the Ultimate Optimus Primal, which I do think I wish they would have incorporated to the Studio Series, but... When you look at the total package, the Studio Series has a little bit of everything. It has a little bit of the Ultimate Optimus Prime. It has a little bit of the Mainline Optimus Prime. And then it has a little bit of the Weaponizer Optimus Prime. So yes, these Optimus Primes do look good. But I think the icing on the cake, if I had to only pick one Optimus Prime and I was on a financial budget constraint i would pick studio series optimus prime because the accessories cater to the other figures as in optimus prime battle trap or as in just optimus primal himself so now it's time for transformation So now that we have him in his 8 mode, I think the 8 mode turned out terrific. The transformation was not too complicated, but it's not too simple either. So I want to say it's maybe intermediate. But checking out the details on this 8, guys, I got his arms turned with the forearms forward. Because I think this looks more natural in my opinion. With that being said, I like right here how it has that ape and that black right there just covering up the gray plain plastic. And then also he has that texturized right here in his forearms. And then also right here in his face, he has the mechanical details of representing the light skin texture of an ape compared to the dark uh, matte black on his head. 
not only that, he's got the uh, the gray pieces right here. And just turn them underneath. You have that ape realistic body right here with the chest and the big rib cage and the belly with the weathering right here. It just looks good. The maximal symbol is definitely there and it does shine so you can see it. The legs, as you already know, they got big, short, stubby legs as an ape. I like the texture right here and how it just looks well. It, Like I said, it does kind of look like a hot mess a little bit, like a folded up chicken wing. But other than that, I don't really mind it because it looks good. Checking out the back of the ape, it is a little complex because of this robot. It looks like his spine is right here with some of the ribs sticking out right there. Then you have some more of the robot uh, weathering right there showing off. You have the feet right here that you really can't hide much of besides making sure it's tucked all the way in, as you just saw. Um, and then, like I said, this Primal for a Studio Series is actually pretty terrific. And I think it turned out great. So for comparisons, here I have all the Optimus Primal figures as shown in robot mode. Here we have them in his eight mode. And yes, they all look good. And these are all the figures I've collected through the Rise of the Beast toy line. But yes, I still got to say it. But I really think right here with the scaling uh, compared to the uh, Studio Series, I feel like Optimus Primal should be about this big, in my opinion, compared to the fellow uh, Autobots when they're in their robots mode. But you know what? I'm, you know, I'm kind of nitpicking uh, because I knew the Takara uh, Ultimate Optimus Prime was superior in the eight mode, in my opinion. Yes, it may not have all the details like in the face right here, but I do think it is the most superior in the eight mode. But not trying to knock the Studio Series, but like I told you earlier, if you had to get one, the Studio Series is the total combined package. But the details on the Studio Series compared to the rest just blow them out of the water when it came to the screen accuracy. And like I said, with that being said, I mean, you already know which one to go get. So I don't need to say it enough, but the screen accuracy in me, to me is the best in my opinion. So here I have Optimus Primal here with his fellow Studio Series uh, brothers and sisters. As you see right here, I do think they look good as a whole and a group. But I do feel like Optimus Primal is a tad bit too small in scale compared to the other Maximals. With that being said, you already know how I feel about it. So here's the side view with uh, basically from tail to head. That's how you have him scaling with Optimus Prime and also Rhinox. And then here we're going to move Air Razor out of the way so you can see how he scales with Cheetor. I'm not sure if that's about right, but I do think that Optimus Primal, when he was in beast mode, at least during the battle scenes, I felt that he was definitely bigger than Cheetor. And... Uh, when compared to with Rhinox, as you see, I think he, you know, he scales very well. And then here with Air Razor, as you know, Air Raider, Air Razor is completely out of scale because she wasn't that big compared to the other Maximals. And here we are for my last comparison. Here I have Optimus Primal with the Rise of the Beast editions of Optimus Prime. So. From my left to my right, here we have the Weaponizers 2-pack Optimus Prime, the Mainline Optimus Prime, and then also on my right, we have the Studio Series Optimus Prime. So as you see, Optimus Primal does scale well to the Autobot vehicles. Now, I'm just using this one for an example, but Prime is the largest out of the Autobot vehicles that we already own. So that's why I'm using him. Now, when it move these out the way, when it comes to the scaling and the appropriate size, I think it works well compared to these. Now, as stated previously, when compared to the other, other Maximals, I feel that the scaling is off. But as you can see, putting him here, hind leg to front of the cab, they're about the same size and length when in alt mode. Of course, you know, the monkey should be... At least in this case, the way the movie, he should definitely be bigger than Optimus Prime. 
but we all know when they transform, Optimus Prime is the tallest. Now, I got this right here. I just got it laying there in the axe. There is no location that I found that it's supposed to go in vehicle mode, but it does sit snugly in there. If you guys want to include the axe, if you got it in vehicle mode, there's a little groove right there, a slot, and then it just slots right there. In between Optimus Prime, you got two cavities right there. It just fits nice and snug. So therefore, mine's just resting right there just for review purposes. But yes, uh, compared to all the Optimus Primes that are out, I think he scales terrific. There's no issues. And that's the scale I really think that Optimus Prime should be compared to Optimus Primal in his beast mode. So now it's time for the Yeah Bro Pickup or the Pass segment portion of my review where I like to share my opinions and my thoughts on this recent pickup. Also hoping to inform you in case you wanted to get some critical information about this figure before you purchase or ultimately decide to pass on this toy. As for this figure, I do believe the paint details on this figure turned out outstanding and there's no complaints because this figure is jam packed with molded plastic for the forearms of the eight, the chest of the eight. Not only that, the details in the head, the details on the robot mode with the weathering, the tons of accessories. As for the execution, this is a brand new mold. That has not came out before. I do hope this mold gets upsized to become a eight length in the near future if they continue to, to produce more of the Rise of the Beast characters from the movie that just was released. In addition to that, there is a ton of playability and also robot mode and also eight mode. With this being able to hold dynamic poses and do open and close his hands, his mouth, and transform ultimately makes this a highly executed figure and very desirable. So with all this being said, to summarize, yes, this is a pickup. So if you find this at your local retail store or you see it in stock online, do not be afraid to get one because with all my opinions shared with you, will give you the uttermost confidence that this toy is not a bust. And it is a pickup and not a pass. So yes, if you're interested in picking up a copy of this figure, I got my copy as I pre-ordered through Amazon.com where it came and shipped to me within a few days after coming in stock. So if you're interested in picking it up, I end up paying the ultimate price of $55.99 plus taxes for this figure. The link will be posted below where it will take you directly to the Yeah Bros Toy Wish List page where you could click on that and also other figures you may be interested in purchasing that I have already reviewed or will be coming up to review very shortly. As always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. By doing these four actions, it shows my channel a tremendous amount of support and not only that, positive feedback as a YouTube content creator. In addition to that, please turn on your notification bell so you will be notified when I've uploaded new content for you to check out. Thank you once again for spending your time watching my video and until next time, yeah bro, I'll see you soon.